song is one that I just ran across by accident. Um, I was listening to the artist, her name's Katie Nicole, and I heard her song and her story, and her story was very um, motivational because she had scoliosis so badly that they had to insert a rod into her spine or into her back to straighten her spine, and it made her health worse, and she laid in bed, it was, I think it said, she said two years before she just realized she had no quality of life at all, and she was um, bedridden, and she had the surgery reversed and had the rod removed, and she gives God full credit for healing her that after she healed up from that surgery, she was, she was made whole. And the doctors didn't anticipate that to be her outcome from that surgery. And she talks about how Jesus uh, worked in her life during that time and how she grew in her faith and how she um, wrote songs during that time. And now she has a ministry from that. But I love that song and listen to it a lot. But I, it made me think about um, when we say, in Jesus' name, amen, when we're praying. So when we think about important names, you know, people came to my mind, people in politics, or maybe people who have a lot of wealth, maybe they have a platform on TV where they are influencers. Um, maybe it's even someone like the Pope who has a lot of prestige within a religious community. But if you think about all of those people with all of that power and all of that money and all that prestige and even the, you know, the platforms to be able to influence people, um, you might think of actors or actresses that have a huge platform and a huge following. and Maybe it's on social media. They are able to attract huge numbers of people um, to pers persuade them to think a certain way. But all of those people are just human. And when it comes down to it, the amount of power they have is limited. And I thought of the name Jesus. You know, there are people who have that name. It's pronounced Jesus in Spanish. But just a quick Google search, I mean a Facebook search, I found these two people with that name. Um, but they don't have power their name, the name in itself doesn't give them all that power. So why does the name of Jesus have so much power and authority? And Philippians 2, 8 through 11 says, And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And so he was the only perfect human, and he submitted himself um, to be the sacrifice for all of us. And so it goes on to say, Therefore God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. And it's because of that sacrifice that he was able to make that he has that name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And why? To the glory of God the Father. So that's ultimately um, the reason we would exalt the name of Jesus. It's for God's glory. And because of what he's able to do that no one else can do. Um, so just like in that video, had those prayers not been prayed, the ending of that story would have been very differently. And a lot of times I think we pray prayers never knowing how God answered them. And we may not see the outcome um, we want or that we anticipate, but if we had not prayed that prayer or that um, repetitive prayer, what might be you know, the result? And then using the name of Jesus in our prayers, just like in that song, she was continually saying in Jesus name. And it's not because of the habit of saying that. And I think a lot of times, you know, I pray and at the end of our, my prayer, I'll put in Jesus name 
Amen. But thinking about that and using it in a way that we want to add power to our prayers. And we're praying in such a way that we want to be in alignment with God's will. And I think that is huge in our prayers and something, you know, to, to think about as we go into prayer. And so when we look at all of this series of script, these scriptures that I have, um, it talks about for his name's sake, for thy name's sake. It's all about his name's sake. So he can help us in times of trouble. And Psalm 143, 11 and 12 say, quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. And quicken me, in some translations, it's rescue me or save me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. And that's right living. In order to have right living, for your name's sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And thy mercy cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Rescue me or save me, Lord, for your name's sake. You know, rescue me from um, things that I might do that I don't want to do or things I may not even realize are sinful. So we can be asking because we want right living and we want for his name's sake to do the right thing. And Psalm 106, 8, nevertheless, he saved them for the sake of his name, that he might make his power known. And so this is another one um, for, for help in times of trouble. And he can give us direction. Or he does give us direction. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. And that's Psalm 31, 3. So here again, he's leading and guiding. He's our rock and our fortress. That's our hiding place, our firm foundation. And it's for his name's sake. Then Psalm 37, 3, for the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. So it's very similar to the previous verse, but it's just repetitive that um, why do we want him to lead us and guide us? What is our real motivation for that? He delivers us from sin. So Psalm 79, 9 says, Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name and deliver us and purge, us, purge away our sins for thy name's sake. And then this one, um, talking about righteousness, helping us with right living. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And so we talked about that a few weeks ago when we looked at Psalm 23 in more detail. And so, like I said, a lot of times we'll end our prayer with in Jesus name or, you know, I've heard people pray and they'll say it repetitively, almost like a catchphrase. I know I catch myself when I'm editing these videos, I'll say, um, or, and so, and, you know, is, are we using in Jesus name as a catchphrase in our prayers? And it's not a magic wand. Uh, one of the devotions that I read in preparation for this lesson, it was saying, just saying, in Jesus' name, I pray, amen. We're not putting any thought into it. We're not putting any confidence in it. We're not putting any hope in it. Um, our faith isn't based on it. And we should be praying in Jesus' name with complete um, confidence in that name with it in the forefront of our mind and so it just really got my attention that when I pray I need to be more mindful of that and more mindful of the power that's in his name and the need to align myself and my um, prayer request to his will so this is last week's pages I love how this one turned out the based on the song that I like you know, when I just have thoughts overtake me, worrisome thoughts that I can't seem to shake, I will play this song and it it's loud and it's it's long and it's repetitive. And so I wrote out the Raise a Hallelujah with you all last week, but then I went in there and I wrote lyrics from that song. So raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. 
I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. And so some of the other lyrics are, Fear you lost your hold on me. With everything inside of me. In the middle of the mystery. You know, a lot of the things we worry about, it's because it's a mystery. We don't know the answer. We don't, um, we can't figure it out. Um, I will watch the darkness flee. I'm going to sing in the middle of my storm. I'm going to sing louder than the unbelief. You're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. And then there's a repetitive lyric, sing a little louder, sing a little louder, sing louder. And so I just really like how that page turned out. But this page simple, but it's got, um, I wrote out in Jesus' name, the name of that song. And then I just printed out the lyrics and glued them on the page, highlighting um, things that I want to remember. I speak the name of Jesus over you when you're praying for someone else. Isn't that a great line to use? I speak the name of Jesus over you and then, you know, make your request or um, maybe maybe you don't know how to pray for someone, but you can say that. I pray for your healing. I pray that your fear would flee. Um, so anyway, that's one idea you could put in your journal for this week. And then the other, I took the picture, the drawing, and I made it like in the middle of two pages. So that's the first time I've done this, but I kind of like it. And I started with the heart, and I just drew a heart. And I'm going to draw a heart and go around it two or three times with the black ink pen um, after I color it in. And I may even take a white pen and go over it also after it's colored red so that it just has some red and white messy lines. And then after that, I came down here and I started with the dress of the little girl and it started out just like a large M. And that's what I did just down from the heart and then I came up with neck, skinny little neck, and then just a circular head. And then her arms are exaggerated. They're just really long. And I think that gives the illusion of, you know, just really reaching up. And so don't be worried about those arms looking too lanky and exaggerated because that's what you're going for. There's not a lot of detail to those arms, just little mitten, mitten hands. And they just had slits for the eyes. When I did the eyes slanting this way, she looked really mean. So just kind of keep the eyes straight and just a little mouth. And then down here at the bottom, instead of bringing the dress um, straight, you're going to curve it back and let it bunch up here on the ground. And then draw her knees look like L's. And then come back about the same length as that that back knee, the L, come back and do the feet, the little toes sticking out. So this will be colored like feet and knees, skin color, and then this will be the same as her dress. Then her hair is blowing to the side in that picture, if you go back and look at it. So you can just color that. If you want to give her an ear, you can, but the picture didn't have one. And then some rays like sun coming down from the, from the heart. And she's sitting on a little mountain, like just a little knoll. And there are flowers all over that mountain. And they're just like this, just little four petaled flowers with a stem. And you might go back and put some petals if you want. But those are all over this little mountain. And I almost thought it would be easier to draw those and color them in and just slightly go back around with uh, green. So then for the lettering, it's all block capital letters except of Jesus, and that's in cursive. And so the lettering was done the way those letters were last week with the low letter, the 
the cross marks low. So A and then make the cross mark real low. And that's how it is with all of the cross marks. Just bring it down low. Anything going over like on the E, the A. And then when you make your R, you bring the R down low so that that little stick, it's all down real low. And that's the only thing unique about these letters. Then, you know, use your cursive for these fancier letters. And then just remember on, um, like on Jesus, you're going to make those down strokes bolder. And I'm going to do all of my letters this, this time in the black. And I just usually go back and bold them in a little bit. And then over here, I did the same thing in cursive for his namesake. And that's where I'm going to put those verses that were in the, the presentation. Some of my verses that I liked um, that referred to. To, for his namesake. So that's going to go on these, these pages in the 